let God arise and his enemies be scattered. Arise, O God, like a mighty warrior. Let God arise and his enemies be scattered. Arise, O God, like a mighty warrior.
Let God arise and his enemies be scattered. Arise, O oh God, like a mighty warrior. Let God arise and his enemies be scattered. Arise, O oh God, like a mighty warrior. Giving 
let God arise and his enemies be scattered. Arise, O God, like a mighty warrior. Yeah. 
Let God arise and his enemies be scattered. Arise, O God, like a mighty warrior. you having a great time thank god for the day that he has made we will continue to rejoice and to be glad in it what a great day i trust that you've been having a great time you can see akemi joining us thank you for joining thank you sister shalak with this you can see so many people coming in Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Thank you so much once again for joining When Women Wait. When Women Wait. We've been having a great time in the presence of the Lord, and I believe that today, to the God we speak to us, uh, Sister Lanry Harrison, welcome, welcome, welcome. I may not be able to call everybody's name. Sister, uh, yo, my namesake, yeah, Mrs. Salu. This sister is so consistent in morning glow. Good to, good to see you on this platform. Praise the Lord. Hello, 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 woman. Yes. We thank God for the month of May. I believe that you've been uh, making a good use of your time. I sent, uh, uh, I ask you guys to tell me some of the things, you know, some of the things that you've learned and um, how you are preparing for life after lockdown. And um, somebody said, oh, I forgot it. Let's pray. Let's pray before we start. We have to pray. We have to pray. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Heavenly Father, we want to say thank you so much for your faithfulness. Thank you for this day that you have made. We've been rejoicing and we've been glad in it. We thank you for the gift of life. We thank you, Father. We can never, never, never take anything for granted. Thank you so much. Thank you, Father, for giving us the opportunity to come together as women once again. We, we are just so grateful for all that you have done. For what you are doing right now, we say thank you. And for blessings on the way, we say thank you. We ask, Lord, that you will encourage us tonight. You will give us a word that will lift our spirit up in Jesus' name. Welcome, my sisters, winning women out there, winning women. I believe that each and every one of us are winners in the name of Jesus. So, uh, as I was saying before, I, you know, sent a question out to ask you, you know, what new thing you have learned and um you know how are you preparing for life after lockdown because you know the lockdown has been lifted gradually and we thank god for that uh, somebody said you know so i found that this season i found that this season my focus has changed i value my health much more also and also i have learned to do my own braids you see 
is very important. Now she said uh, this uh, season has changed her focus. Her focus has changed. She, she value her health much more now. So it's very important for us to really uh, value our health because health is wealth. Well done, well done. In this season that a lot of us are eating you know, much more than usual, we need to value, we need to value our health as well. Also, somebody said um, they are missing, uh, okay, they are missing getting their hair done, but another sister said she's learned to, you know, to do her own braid. Another sister said she's uh, learning a new musical instrument and getting back on the guitar after a while. Uh, due to get uh, her nails done. Oh, the same here. I can't wait to get my nails done. It's really long right now, but we thank God for the gift of life because life is even more than that. Also, somebody said, I haven't developed a new daily schedule with, which focuses on my key priorities. I will continue this. Yes, I want to believe that there's something that you are bringing out of this season. So let's make sure that we continue that after the lockdown is lifted because I believe that some of us, we've learned to discipline ourselves in, you know, some areas and we've learned new, new things. I will tell you some of the things I have done with myself in a minute. So, but don't let it stop after the lift, uh, the, the lockdown has been lifted. Let's continue. Let's continue to focus on our lives. Let's continue to focus on God. Let's continue to focus on our family. Very, very important. And I want you to know, everyone has been affected by this, you know, in this season. You, that there's nobody, I don't know anybody that has not been affected. Everybody, even little children, even our grandchildren, you know, not being able to go to the nursery or their school to meet up with their friends. And I, I, I want you to know that our lives have changed forever. And I want to believe that is a change for good, is a change for good because when you look at this time, there are some of some things which, you know, we, we, we used to take for granted. Now we know the importance and maybe some of the things we gave too much attention to. Some of us, maybe we, we've paid too much attention to how we look outwardly. Please don't get me wrong. There's nothing wrong in you looking after yourself. But I want to believe that some of us, you know, we pay too much attention to that. And during the lockdown, I mean, you couldn't, you know, make up as you used to do all the time i mean that reminds me you no know, pastor was making fun of me we're just talking about you know this recording and everything and he said you know there was one friday uh he was smelling perfume all over the house and then he said to himself oh where is she going he's going to smell the perfume but you know when you're used to doing something you just you just do it so that i, I know there are some things like i said that we've taking for granted now we are understanding that look life is more than that and you know maybe some people like men some men you know they they really focus a lot on their cars and everything and now the car is packed they, they, because you know we are not going anywhere but i want to pray that as we come out of this season that everything that we have learned we will take it beyond this time and some people said they've been reaching out more to people you know because you know it's so easy to get so locked up in yourself that you are not reaching out to other people and i want to believe also for me my relationship is being defined right now you know you just have to uh, look at the people around you and the relationship there are some people that you think you can't do without or people who even think you can't do without them but you are redefining your relationships and we are getting our priorities in order to know that look these are there are some things that are more important than others and for me also you know i've been I've had to cook something that I've not cooked in 15 years. Can you imagine in 15 years that I've not cooked? I've had to cook it and, you know, I like all these cooking gadgets, but some of them were just sitting in my kitchen. But during this time, I've been using them and um, I've been learning to cook new food. And one of the things I did, you know, anytime I go to Nigeria, I like roasted plantain. I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. I'm talking about boli for those who are, you know, and sometimes, you know, when I go to Nigeria, there's no way I cannot leave Lagos without eating boli. Sometimes we have to drive the whole of Lagos to find where 
I can get roasted plantain boli. And ha, ah, I don't know whether you've tried roasted plantain and uh, peanuts. My goodness, you know. So that is me. I'm just telling you. I don't like. You know, some people will be forming. Yes, I do drive round Lagos to look for boli because I like eating it. But now with the air, air fryer, I'm able to make my own. You need to try it. Get air fryer and get your plantain, you know, that is not too ripe. You will enjoy it. You need to try it. I'll send my invoice for that information that I'm giving you. And also I found myself that I've really been disciplined more. You know, my life now has, like pastor will say, let your life have uh, a rhythm especially with the morning glow so you are able to discipline myself i've been able to have uh, to 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 plan my day very well so i am what, what am i saying all of this i'm just challenging you that let's go out of this play out of this season with the same thing don't let it stop so that once the lockdown is lifted and then we go back to life you know the business as usual life as usual i pray that god will give you strength so that everything that god has taught you everything that you have learned in this season you know you will even do better some people have found themselves that the book they said they want to write they've been you know they've started they're learning new things let's continue let's continue so that when we look back to this time we'll be able to say yes you know, the enemy meant it for evil, but God turned it around for our good. Because I want to believe that some of us are getting better. Some of us are getting better. You know, we are asking for help. So there are some people who even when they need help, they can't even ask for help because they think, oh, I don't want people to think I don't know how to do it. Uh, don't deceive yourself. Oh. If people are deceiving you, don't deceive yourself. And don't be forming unnecessarily. If you need help, ask. Ask, ask people around you and you'll be amazed that they won't i mean it's like they don't even mind you know helping you so i pray once again that you know this time of lockdown as things have been lifted that our spirit will be lifted as well because i want you to know it's time to rise it's time to rise because the lockdown is being lifted it's time to rise to rise means to get up after falling down this i mean some people have I've, I've been thrown down by this COVID-19, but it's time for us to rise above it. Because I think it was last week that I told us when we were saying there is life, there is something on the other side for us. There is something on the other side and we must not allow discouragement to, to, uh, to stop us from getting to the other side because your blessing is waiting for you on the other side. The new you is waiting for you on the other side. The better you is waiting for you on the other side. So it's time to rise. It's time to come into action. It's time to rise to the occasion. Because I believe that as I'm talking, there are still some people out there who are still allowing this period to keep them down. It's time to rise. It's time to get up. We must not allow limitation. To rise is to awake, to move up, to stand up, to straighten up, to improve ourselves. Like some of us have been improving ourselves. And I want, I want to believe that even some of us, some of the things you think you cannot do. You have now, by the grace of God, during this season, you have, God has helped you to see the strength that is in you. Like that scripture says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So you can now see that, oh, okay, I have the strength by the grace of God to do the things that I thought, you know, I wouldn't be able to do. So it's time for us to advance. It's time for us to make progress. It's time for us not to allow limitation. No limitation. No limitation because limitation is restriction. COVID-19 has restricted us. COVID-19 has made some, some, of us, some of us to be frustrated. The COVID-19 has blocked some, some of us. It has restricted some of us. It has hindered some of us. It has put an embargo on some of the things that some people want to do. It has su suppressed some people. But it's time to rise. It's time to rise. It's time to rise. It's time to go higher. You know, where you are right now, may be a good location but i want you to know it's not your destiny where you are right now may be a good location but it's not your destiny because god has greater and much more for you so for my winning woman out there i'm encouraging you and i'm challenging you at the same time it's time to rise let's rise above this situation let's rise above this season now so that we can get to the other side 
so that we can be a partaker of the blessing that is on the other side for us. Like I said, where you are may be a good location, but it's not your destination. It's like, let's say, for example, you're going to Birmingham from London and then you stop at a service station. Service station, that, that location, you know, may be good because, you know, there are shops. If you are like me that like shopping, I love my shopping. You know, it may be a good location where you can buy things, where you can shop. And you so you see so many beautiful things, but that is not your destination that is not where you are going so right now for some of you even if you're saying to yourself oh yeah i have not allowed this time to keep me down it might be a good location but the best is still ahead of you like for example also um it, uh, it may be a good location but it might just be a bus stop it might just be a bus stop your bu the bus stop is not your destination a bus stop is not your destination. A bus stop is where you wait to get a bus. A bus stop is where you, you wait to change to another bus. It may be good. Things may be okay at that bus stop, but that is not your destination. For example, for those who have been to Dubai, you know, because uh, the temperature there is so hot, they have air condition at their bus stops. But that, can you imagine somebody now saying, oh, I like this place. I can't, I, 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 I'm not bothered by the heat. And then now decide to stay there. No, 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 it's just a bus stop. Yes, that bus stop, that location may be good. That location may be wonderful right now, but that is not your destination. So what am I trying to say? It's time to rise up. It's time to get up. Maybe for some of us, we've just been allowing this time. All we've just been doing is to, you know, we've just been sleeping. We've just been having a pity party. It's time to get up, arise and shine for your light has come. Your light has come because on Monday we are going to get, uh, it's like the start of, you know, uh, it's going to be it's just like one month to the second half of the year 2020. Because July. We are starting the second half. And I want you to know, it does not matter what this first half have, have, have brought to you. I want you to know, especially to my KICC family, that this year is still our year of shining. And we will shine in the mighty name of Jesus. God is bigger than anything that may want to tear you apart. God is bigger than COVID-19. God is bigger than anxiety. God is bigger than depression. Anything that may want to tear you apart, you will win because it's your winning season. It's your winning season. It's your winning season. You will win. You are a winner. We, the Bible says that we are more than conquerors. You are a winner. You are, this is your season, a winning season. Well, you may be saying, well, I don't even know what is going to happen when I go back to work. Although, yeah, they've called me back to work, but I, I'm not even sure whether they will retain me. This is your winning season. Don't be like Job. You know, Job said, what I have been afraid of has now happened to me. That will not be your portion in Jesus' name. Let's go with confidence. Everything, not only will you win everything that is attached to you your family your husband your children they will win in the name of jesus because there is a champion on the inside of you no matter what the enemy may have thrown at you during this season there's a champion on the inside of you so right now i am calling i'm releasing that champion that is in you i am releasing that champion that is in you to come out i'm releasing that champion that is in you to go and prosper i'm releasing that champion that is in you to rise to rise to rise you need to put courage on the inside of you we must not allow discouragement we must not allow discouragement because i want you to know that no one is ever defeated until he decides he is defeated until you decide that you are defeated you are never defeated until you allow the enemy to make you feel bad to to keep you in one place you are not defeated it's time for you to put courage on the inside of you it's good for people to encourage us but like david the bible says that david encouraged himself in the lord it's time to put courage courage is standing when everyone else wants to run standing 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 your ground standing and you know standing on the word of god standing on the promises of god standing on the faithfulness of god courage is speaking when everybody when everyone else is afraid to speak it's time to speak of the goodness of God. It's time to speak of the greatness of God. 
courage is acting when everyone else is paralyzed by fear. God has not given you the spirit of fear. We need courage to, for us to rise, for us to get into the next, you know, half of this year. We need courage to rise, for us to get to the other side where our blessing is waiting for us. We need courage. Courage is taking action in the face of danger. Courage is grace under pressure. When you are feeling pressurized, is grace under pressure. Courage is grace under pressure. Courage is fear that says it's prayer. Courage is fear that says it's prayer. Because sometimes when you are afraid, you are not even able to pray. But courage is fear that says it's prayer. My prayer once again is that God will help us and give us the grace to move on from this time. Because there are some people who say, well, they may even, uh, they may, the, uh, the, the, the lockdown may be, they may be lifting it, but I'm not even sure whether I want to go back to work. I'm not even sure whether I want to, uh, you, I want to do all the things that I've been doing before. Don't allow the enemy to keep you down because that is the plan of the enemy, but you are not going to allow him. Whose report would you believe? Are you going to believe the report of the Lord or are you going to be looking at the things that are around you? It's time to put courage on the inside of us. And so tonight, I just want to encourage and to challenge you to have confidence in God. To be able to say, I am confident. I have confidence in God. I have confidence in his faithfulness. I have confidence in his goodness. As we go into the next half of this year, to be able to have confidence, to be able to say, yes, I know. Yeah, weeping may have endured for a night, but I know that my joy is coming in the morning. Yes, I know I may have experienced some setback, but I know that it's not over until I win because I have confidence in God. Confidence is full trust. Confidence is, re, re, is you know, having assurance in God, having assurance in the faithfulness of God. Confidence, you know, is boldness. Boldness to be able to say, I know that my father did it before, he will do it again. Confidence is firm believing God. Do you really believe God? Do you really trust God for the rest of 2020? Because 2020 is not over. We're just going to the end of May. We still have June, seven months. We still have seven months. Do you trust God for, with your life? Do you trust God with your marriage? Do you trust God? Do you have confidence in him that he that has brought you this far will not leave you? I want you to know he did not bring you this far to leave you. He did not bring you this far to leave you. Confidence is sureness. Confidence is firm belief. Confidence is trust. Trust in God. Confidence is uh, confined, convinced. Confidence is counting on, counting on God, counting on the faithfulness of God. To be confident is to be positive, is to be trusting, is to be unafraid. Is to be unafraid. Yes, we don't know what, you know, uh, the future holds for us, but we know that the one who holds the future is holding our hands and he will never let go your hand. He will never let go your hand. He will never let go your hand. And so the Bible says in 1 John chapter 5, I'm going to read quickly 1 John chapter 5 verses 14 to 15. And this is the confidence. I'm reading um, 1 John chapter 5 verses 14 to 15 in the Amplified. It says, and this is the confidence, the assurance, the privilege of boldness which we have in him. And this is the confidence, the assurance, the privilege of boldness that we have in him. We are sure. We are sure that if we ask anything, make any request according to his will, in agreement with his own plan, he listens to and hears us. Do you have that confidence? Do you have that kind of confidence? Do you have that assurance? Do you have the privilege of boldness? The privilege of boldness as we have in God. Are you sure that if you ask anything, if you make any request according to his will, in agreement with God's plan, because you may have your own plan, but God has his own plan. He said he has plans for us to give us a future and a hope. Even at those times when we don't have plans for ourselves, he said he has plans for us to give us a future and a hope. And he said, he, he listens. Do you have that assurance that he listens and he hears? Verse 15 says, and if since 
we positively know that. Do you positively know that God listens to you? That he listens to us in whatever we ask? We also know with settled and absolute knowledge. With settled and absolute knowledge. That's confidence. With settled and absolute knowledge. That we, are, that we have granted us as our present possession. The request made of him. We need to have that kind of confidence. We need to be sure. We need to know. Are you sure? We need to have the assurance. We need to be settled in our mind. We need to be absolute. We need to have that absolute knowledge that anything that we ask, as long as it is his plan, that he, will, he, that he hears us and he will surely give it to us. Also, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58. Therefore, my dear brothers, my dear sisters, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourself fully to the work of the Lord because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. And one translation says, stand your ground. The message translation says, stand your ground. Stand firm. Let nothing move you. No shaking at this time. No shaking. Let nothing move you. King James says, be ye steadfast, unmovable, and always abounding in the work of the Lord. Because you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Your labor during this time, maybe you've been reaching out to other people. You've been helping people who are in need. Your labor is not in vain. Stand steadfastly. Let nothing move you. Let not coronavirus move you. Don't allow anxiety. Know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. Tonight, I want to really encourage us. I want to give us some scriptures so that when we go out into the next, you know, phase of this year, when we go to the remainder, into the remainder of this year, we'll be able to have assurance and confidence in God. Psalm 138. Psalm 138. I'm going to read quickly verses 7 and 8. Psalm 128. Psalm 138. 138 in the New Living Translation. Verse 7 and 8. He said, it reads, Though I am surrounded by troubles, you will protect me from the anger of my enemies. You reach out your hand, and the power of your right hand saves me. The Lord will work out his plan for my life. For your faithful love, O Lord, endures forever. Don't, ab don't abandon me, for you made me. The Lord will work out his plan for my life. Though I may be surrounded by trouble. Though I may be surrounded by disappointment. Though I may be surrounded by people who don't like me. He says, you will protect me from the anger of my enemy. God will protect you from the anger of your enemy. You know, there are some people who are just angry at you. They are just angry with, with you without any reason. But the word of, of God to you tonight is that he will protect you. He will reach out his hands. He will reach out his hands. He will save you. And verse 8 said, The Lord will work out his plan for my life. It does not matter what has happened right now. Some of you may have lost your job and you are wondering what is going to happen. He said, The Bible said, The Lord will work out his plan. He has plans for your life. So you must have that confidence in God. You must be confident of the plans of God for your life. The new King James says, the Lord will perfect that which concerns me. God will bring perfection to everything that concerns you. God will bring perfection to your family, to your marriage, to your career, to your business. He will bring perfection. He will surely bring perfection. So in other words, what I'm trying to say tonight is that this is not the time for you to quit. Don't quit on God in the face of trial. Don't quit on God in the face of test, temptation, persecution, distress, hard times. Because right now, we are in the middle of hard times. But be steadfast and unmovable. Let people look at you and wonder how you are still able to smile. Let people look at you and wonder how you are still able to, to go on. But you know that it's because God is holding you. Is because you have confidence in God. Is because you have. We need to have confidence and not waver in our commitment to God. 
God will take care of everything that concerns you. He will perfect everything that concerns you. I am confident. I have confidence in God. I have confidence in God. Proverbs 3.26 For the Lord shall be thy confidence and shall keep thy foot from being taken. The Lord will be your confidence and shall keep thy foot from being taken. Your foot will not be taken. You will not. They will, you, you will stand your ground in the mighty name of Jesus. Proverbs 14, 26. In the fear of the Lord is strong confidence and his children shall have a place of refuge. Ah. In the fear of the Lord is strong confidence. As you continue to fear the Lord, I'm talking about holy fear. I'm not talking about you being afraid of your father. He's your heavenly father. He says in the fear of the Lord is strong confidence. I'm talking about you having confidence in God tonight. Not, I'm not talking about you having your confidence in yourself, but I'm talking about the confidence of God. He said in strong, in the fear of the Lord is strong confidence. Philippians chapter 1 verse 6. Philippians chapter 1 verse 6. Being confident of this very thing, that he which has begun a good work in you, we perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. The Bible is telling us to be confident. Be confident of this one thing, that God who has begun a good work, and I, because I believe that God has begun a good work, despite the lockdown, God has begun a good work. You know, the enemy meant it for evil, but God, God is turning it around for us. Because we are learning new things. We are making changes in our lives. We are doing things. Some things that you thought you, you, you will never be able to do. I mean, for example, if before, you know, uh, uh, COVID-19, if somebody tells me that I'll be doing what I'm doing tonight, I'll say, you must be joking. But now I'm learning. I'm, I'm being more, you know, techy right now. You know, I'm learning gradually some things that I thought, oh, I won't be able to do. Now I'm having, you know, Zoom meetings. You know, the enemy meant it for evil. But God is allowing us to make progress in our lives. So be confident that this good thing that he has started, because I believe he has started good thing in your family, in your marriage. Woman, he has started good thing in your, in your marriage. Yes, maybe before you didn't have time for each other. Now you are able to spend time together. And I pray that that good thing that you have started in your marriage will continue in the name of Jesus. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 35 says, So do not throw away your confidence. It will be richly rewarded. Your confidence in God will be richly rewarded when you trust Him, when you have confidence in Him. The Bible says it will richly be rewarded. So don't throw it away. Don't throw it away. Don't, don't allow the enemy to steal it. So why should we have confidence in God? We should have confidence in God because God is powerful. God is powerful. He's more is powerful than whatever may want to break us down. He's bigger than anything that may want to break us down. He's a powerful God. He's a great God. Matthew 19, 26. Jesus looked at them and said, With man, this is impossible. Well, with God, all things are possible. With God, all things are possible. Maybe you are looking, Lord, how is it going to be possible? How oh, my job, what is going to be happen? What is going to happen after this? Yes. People may think some things are impossible. But you will tell them, watch my God. Watch my Father do the impossible things. And maybe you are the one that have put that label impossible. It's time to remove it. Why should we have confidence in God? We should have confidence in God because he's, a, he's faithful to his promise. He's a promise keeper. He's a promise keeper. He's a promise keeper. He said he will not. Let me read Deuteronomy chapter 7 verse 9. He said, Know therefore that the Lord thy God is God, the faithful God which keepeth covenant and mercy with them that love him and keep his commandment to a thousand generations. God keeps his promise. He's a faithful God. You know, some people, sometimes they will promise you some things and then they will come back. Oh, due to some unforeseen circumstances, I'm not able to do what I promised you. No, mm, our God is faithful. He's a promise keeper. He's reliable. He's dependable. He's authentic. He's precise. He's proven. He's trustworthy. He's constant. He's constant. You know, I sang a song last week. I'm not 
I'm not going to sing again today, but it says, never fail me yet. That's the word, it's never fail me yet. This one thing I know, as I onward go, Jesus Lord, never fail me yet. He will not fail you. You might think he has failed you. No. Yes, that thing that you are trusting him for did not come at the time you thought you needed it. But he knows the time. He knows the right time. He will not fail you. He's a promise keeper. God is not a man that he should lie. Neither the son of man that he should repent. He said, I'm watching over my word to perform it. He said, you know, in Mark, in Mark chapter 13 verse 31. Mark chapter 13 verse 31. He said, heaven and earth will pass away. But my word will never pass away. What has he been telling you during this time of lockdown? What, has he, what are the things he has promised you? In, your, in the night season, in your night season, what are those things, what are those words that the promises he has given you? He said, heaven and earth may pass away, but he said, my word will never pass away. My word, and even the scripture says that his word will not return to him void, without fulfilling what it has been sent to do. So every word of God that has been sent to you, there will be a performance in the mighty name of Jesus. There will be a performance in the mighty name of Jesus. I mean, when we look in, 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 in the scripture, there are so many people who have confidence in God. But when we look at the life of David in Psalm, Psalm 23, I'm going to rush quickly through Psalm 23 so that we can have, we'll be able to say like David, I, I am confident. I have confidence in God. I am, I have, uh, you know, I have confidence in God. Let me read quickly. I mean, verse 1 says, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. The Lord is your shepherd. Be confident of the fact that the Lord is your shepherd. Be able to say, I am confident. I have confidence in God. Be my shepherd. He says, I shall not want. He's your shepherd. A shepherd take care of his sheep. A shepherd protects his sheep. And so he says, the Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is mine. That is personal. Mine. I mean, what a confidence. He said, yes, the Lord. I belong to him. I am his. He is my shepherd. I shall not want. The Lord is my shepherd. That's confidence. Because he knows that he's, uh, you know, David knew that God will take care of him. And I want to believe it's the same with you out there tonight. Because this shepherd that we're talking about is a good shepherd. He's a great shepherd. He's a great shepherd. Job 36, 11 says, if they obey and serve him, they will spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasure. Because he said, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. I shall not want. I have confidence in the provision of God. I have confidence in the provision of God because I know I shall not want. And his word says to me that if I obey and I serve him, I shall spend my days in prosperity and my years in pleasure. Philippians chapter 4 verse 19 says, But my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. So I am confident of the provision of God. God will provide for you. I want you to know tonight, be confident. Have that assurance that he will provide for you. He will meet with all your needs. Because Agai chapter 2 verse 8 says, The silver is mine and the gold is mine, declares the Lord Almighty. He says the silver is his, the gold is his. We don't serve a poor God, we serve <laughs> a rich God. The Bible says that the streets of heaven are made of gold. The streets that you are going to walk on in heaven, they are made, they are made of gold. So you can see that the God that we serve is not a poor God. And I want you to know tonight that everything that you need is already provided. Everything that you need, that you will ever need, is already provided. God is not scratching his head right now, thinking of, oh, how am I going to meet with my daughter's need? No, 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 no. Everything that you need is already provided. Verse 2, uh, let me quickly read verse 2, says, he, re he makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. That means rest. I have confidence in God because I know he will give me rest. That is refreshment. That is peace. I have confidence that God will give me peace. I have confidence that he will refresh my soul. I have confidence. I have, you know, confidence of God's rest. I have confidence of God's refreshment because water refreshes 
water keeps alive, water cleanses. He said, he makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. Water refreshes. I am confident that God will give me rest. I have confidence in God that he will refresh my soul. Verse 3 says, he restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. To restore means to put something back to the way it was originally. There will be restoration. I don't know what you may have lost, but I want you to know tonight that there will be restoration. There will be restoration. He said, he restored my soul. He restored my soul. I don't know what has been happening to you. I don't know what the enemy has thrown at you, at your soul. Maybe he, has, he, he wants you to be depressed or to be discouraged, but I want you to know tonight that he will restore your soul. He will restore your soul. And he said, he leaded, he leaded me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. May you be led of the Lord. As we go into this, you know, 2020, the rest of 2020, may you be led of the Lord. May he guide you. May he guide you. Because Proverbs chapter 3 says in all your ways, that when you acknowledge God in all your ways, he will direct your path. Let's acknowledge God in everything that we do. And when we acknowledge him, he will direct our path. As we go into this weekend also, God will direct your path. As we go from Monday into the month of June, to the month of fasting and prayer, he will, he will guide you. He will direct you. He will direct you. Even in Isaiah chapter 30, verse 21, says, wherever you turn, he said, you will hear a voice behind you saying, this is the way, walk in it. This is the way, walk in it. As we go into the time of fasting and prayer in, in, you know, in June, he will direct you. You will hear a voice. As you spend time waiting on the Lord and praying, you will hear a voice behind that will say, this is the way, walk in it. This is the way concerning your business, walk in it. This is the way concerning your marriage, walk in it. This is the way concerning your, your, your husband, walk in it. This is the way concerning your children, walk in it. That will be your portion in the mighty name of Jesus. Rushing quickly, verse 4 says, Yea, do I walk through the valley of the shadow of death? I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and your staff, they comfort me. Yea, do I walk through the valley of the shadow of death? This period of coronavirus look like we are walking through the valley of the shadow of death. But he said we will not fear. I said, I will fear no evil. Because he has already promised us in Psalm 91 that no evil shall come near our dwelling place. So even though we are walking through the valley of the shadow of death, maybe some of you, what you are experiencing right now, is like we are walking through the valley of the shadow of death. Have no fear. Because he is with you. His rod and his staff, they are comforting you. Be confident in the protection of the Lord. Be confident in the comfort of the Lord. Be confident that God will protect you. Say, though... I walk through. You are walking through. You are not stuck there. You are walking through that situation. You are walking through that challenge. The key word is true. Yea, do I walk through? Walking through, not stuck. Trouble don't come to stay. They come to pass. Trouble don't come to say. They come to pass. Coronavirus don't come to stay. They come to pass. And that is why the lockdown is being lifted because there's been a lot of, you know, changes. And we pray and we, we pray to God that there we, we, we continue to hear positive reports in the mighty name of Jesus. God is with us in the valley. Do I walk through the valley of the shadow of death? I want you to know it's there with you in the valley. Shadow. A shadow is always a, a distortion of reality. A shadow cannot harm you. You know, when it's, when it's warm and when, when it's very bright, you see your shadow of yourself, but that shadow cannot hurt you. A shadow is always a distortion of reality. It makes something bigger than it's supposed to be. Are you ready to be led out of your shadow? Because he said, yeah, do I walk through the valley of the shadow of the... I will fear no evil. A shadow cannot harm you. Whatever you may be going through right now is just a shadow. I will fear no evil. Don't allow fear in your heart. Fear renders one's useless. Fear will prevent you from enjoying the blessing that you have. Fear 
we prevent you from enjoying the blessing that you have, the blessing of your family, the blessing of the people around you. Fear is a dark room. We are, we are negative, have been developed. You know, for photographers, people who take pictures, they, 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 they develop negatives, you know, in the dark room. Fear is that dark room where negative are developed. So when you allow fear in your life, you are allowing negative things to be developed. But tonight, I believe I have winning women out there who are going to make up their mind. No, I will fear no evil because I am walking through this. I am walking through this. I am not stuck. I am walking through this. And when you look in the scripture, you know, they say there are 366 fear not in the Bible. So that means uh, for every day, there is a fear not. Even the year that is a leap year, fear not. Fear not, because God has not given us the spirit of fear. He has given us the, the spirit of power, of love, and sound mind. May sound mind be your portion during this period in the mighty name of Jesus. We must be confident of the protection of the Lord. Let me read this uh, scripture. Romans chapter 8 verse 15 says, For you did not receive a spirit that makes you a slave again to, to fear. But you receive the spirit of sonship, and by him we cry, Abba, Father. You have not received the spirit that makes you a slave again to fear. When you allow fear, that means you are becoming, you are become a slave to fear. And you are not supposed to be a slave. You are a child of God. So don't be a slave to fear. You are never alone. God is always with us. We can make it through these tough times. You can make it through the tough times of life because you know that God is with you. you. Say, do I walk through the valley of the shadow of death? Do I walk through the valley of the shadow of death? I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort you. May you be comforted in the name of Jesus. May you be comforted in the name of Jesus because you know he's with you. Verse 5 says, Thou prepared a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointed my head with oil. My cup runneth over. That is confidence in abundance of God. Confidence in the abundance of God. Confidence that there will be overflow in your life. Say, thou prepared a table before me in the presence of my enemies. And he anoints my head with oil. He anoints and my cup runneth over. That's hope. That's grace. That's favor. So you need to be confident in the, in the grace of God. You need to have confidence, in, you know, in, in the favor of God, in the abundance of God, in the hope in God. Remember Psalm 91. And don't ever forget is that he said a thousand may fall by, your, by thy side and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come near you. He said only with your eyes will you behold and see the reward of the wicked. Isaiah chapter 43 verse 2. Isaiah chapter 40, 43 verse 2. I will read in the New Living Translation. It said, when you go through deep waters, I will be with you. Maybe what you are going through right now will be like deep water. He said, I will be with you. When you go through rivers of difficulty, not just difficulty, rivers. <laughs> rivers. You know, rivers is when it's like you are overcoming one difficulty and another one is showing up. But the Bible, the word of the Lord to you tonight said, when you go through rivers of difficulty, you will not drown. That challenge will not drown you. This COVID-19 will not drown us. Whatever challenges it has brought will not drown us. And it says, when you walk through the fire of oppression, you will not be burned up. The flame will not consume you. I will read it again. When you go through deep waters, not shallow waters. You know, there are some, there are some problems that are deep. There are some, you know, when <laughs> some people tell you, maybe they're just discussing their challenges with you and you say, ah, that is deep. Or you hear what some people are going through, you say, that is deep. But the word of the Lord to you tonight is, when you go through deep waters, he said he will be with you. Have that confidence. Trust him. He said, when you go through rivers of difficulty, you will not drown. You will not drown in the name of Jesus. As a servant of the Lord Jesus Christ, I speak into your life. You will not drown. That challenge will not drown you. That problem will not drown you in the name of Jesus. When you walk through the fire of oppression, you will not be burnt up. The flame will not consume you. Even you will not be able to smell 
the smoke on you. Praise the Lord. That's the kind of confidence that we should have in God. That's the kind of confidence we should have in God. Verse 6 says, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me. That's confidence. We are confident of his goodness. We are confident of the goodness of God. We are confident of the mercy of God. Say, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me. As we go into the rest of 2020, only goodness and mercy will follow you. When you look to your right, it will be goodness and mercy. When you look to your left, it will be goodness and mercy. When you look behind you, it will be goodness and mercy. When you look ahead of you, it will be goodness and mercy. Those are the two companions that will follow you. And much more in the mighty name of Jesus. Say, surely, surely, without any doubt, that's confidence. That's confidence. Do you really have confidence in God? Are you able to say that surely goodness and mercy will follow me? Because he is good. He is merciful. These are the qualities of God. I mean, as I pass through the valley of life, as I pass through this time in my life, God's goodness and God's kindness and God's mercy will be the one following me in the mighty name of Jesus. And he said, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Women out there, are you happy in church? I know right now we're not able to gather. Are you happy in church? But when the lockdown is over, you need to be happy in church. I know right now we are embracing church online. I know it's good. We're talking about changes. Some of the things that, you know, changes in our lives because our lives have been changed forever. Yes, now I know that the, 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 the building is not the church. We are the church. But we must, the Bible says we must not forsake the assembly of the brethren. So when the lockdown is lifted concerning churches, make sure you are happy in church. Don't say, well, I'm, I'm just embracing the new thing. And you live very close to the church and you're saying, oh, I think I will just have church online. Since, you know, it's a new thing that we have embraced. No, let me see you in church. Let us see you in church. Don't be lazy. Don't be lazy. So he said, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Don't now say, ah, the church is too big. You know, don't start, you know, murmuring and groaning. Ah, the, the church is too big. I think this uh, church online is just so cozy. You know, it's just myself and my family. No. It's time to reach out. It's time to reach out. We must have confidence in God. We're running out of time, but I want to quickly read Psalm 37 verse 25. This was David speaking here. He said, I was young and now I am old. Yet I have never seen the righteous forsaken or their children begging bread. I have never seen the righteous forsaken or their children begging bread. That this is confidence. David, we know, has gone through so many things. He has experienced pleasure. He has experienced pain. He has, he has tasted the bitter. He has tasted the sweet. But he still said, I was young and now I'm old. I have never seen the righteous forsa for forsaken. No, their children begging bread. You will not be forsaken in the name of Jesus. God will not abandon you. God will not abandon you. You may be beaten, but never forsaken. You may be oppressed, but never forsaken. You may be rejected, but never forsaken. You may be despised, but never forsaken. You may be hungry, but never forsaken. You may be poor, but never forsaken. You may be single, never forsaken. Lonely, but not alone. You may be hated, but never forsaken. You may be turned out for, for promotion, but you are not forsaken. Never forsaken. The righteous are never forsaken. What can we say of Paul? When we look at all the things he went through also, he said nothing will be able to separate him from the love of God. When, we, when you get to, I mean, at home, when you're at home, just read Romans chapter 8. Read it in different translations. It says nothing. He said nothing. He said we are assured and know that God being a partner in their labor, all things work together and are fitting into a plan for good and for those who love God and who are called according to his design and purpose. He said, what then shall we say to all this? If God is for us, who can be against us? 
Who can be our foe? If God is on your side, nobody can be against you. Nobody can be against you. And he said, who shall ever separate us from Christ's love? Shall suffering, affliction, tribulation, calamity, COVID-19? So he's trying to say, don't allow anything to separate you from God. Have confidence in God. Have confidence in the goodness of God. So as we go into this time, from, from Monday into the time of fasting and prayer, what do you see? As we go into the time of fasting and prayer, we need to discipline ourselves. Because the Bible says that we should not be anxious. Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 to 7. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God which transcends all understanding will guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. So from Monday, we are going into time of fasting and prayer. Say, so don't be anxious. But by prayer and supplication. The month before the second half of 2020, we are going into it. It's still our year of shining. And as you go into this one, declare and decree what you want God to do in your life. Declare and decree what you want God to do in your family. What you want to see happen, declare and decree it. All the things, pray to God that you want an application of what you have learned a fulfillment of the dreams and all the things that God, I, I, the dreams and ideas that God has given you as we go into this time of fasting and prayer. And please make sure you fast. Make sure you wait on the Lord. I know it's easy. You've been going to the kitchen, into the fridge. You know, if you have to put a, put a picture of yourself on the door of the fridge, so that maybe that will, you know, deter you from just opening the fridge and eating and eating. Or even if you have to put a statement, a statement that will help you to make sure that you fast and pray during this time. Because we are going into that from Monday. Because that will boost our confidence in God. Tonight, I want to believe that you've been encouraged. You've been encouraged tonight. We must trust God with our lives. Trust God. What do you want to see? Whose report would you believe? Whose report? Remember the story of the Israelites. When God told Moses to send 12 leaders to go and spy Canaan, some of them came back with evil reports. Ten came back with evil reports, only two. Whose report would you believe? They said, ah, we saw giants there. We are like grasshopper. Who are you? Are you a giant killer or a grasshopper? Are you a giant killer or a grasshopper? As we look to the future, what do you see? Do you see yourself as a giant killer or do you see yourself as a grasshopper? They say, oh, we're like grasshopper in their, in, in their sight. And even now in our own sight, how bad can it be that you compare yourself to a grasshopper? The devil is a liar. But as we look into, you know, to the rest of the year, what do you see? What do you see? Do you see yourself as a giant killer or do you see yourself as a grasshopper? You are not a grasshopper. You are a giant killer. That is whom God has made you. That is whom God has made you. They saw their enemies as giants. God is bigger than your challenges. God is bigger than whatever you may be going through. I've come tonight with a good report. The good report that says you are more than conquerors through the Lord Jesus who loves you. The good report that says that all things are possible. The good report that says you are blessed in the city and you are blessed in the, in, in the field. The good report that says that weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning because God has promised us that he will restore. He will restore. Joel chapter 2. He will restore verses 25 and 26. Everything that the enemy has stolen in this period, he will restore. Have confidence in God. Trust him. Trust him with your life. Trust him with your family. Have confidence in his goodness. Have confidence in his provision. Have confidence in his protection. Have confidence. And let's go out. Let's rise above this time. Let's rise above this. Let's rise up. Let's go out there and be the giant killer that God has created us to be. And I will remind you lastly as I go tonight. Well, today is... Uh, the last Friday for now that we'll be having when women wait because the month of June in KICC is our month of fasting and prayer and we always focus on that and you know I mean pastor was actually telling me maybe to look for another day to do it you know but I said no it's better for us to focus on the time of fasting and prayer and then we'll come back after the time of fasting and prayer 
I pray that God's grace will be sufficient for you. And I want to remind you of what I said to us, I think about two weeks ago, about an egg, carrot, and a coffee bean that were put in hot water. They all went through the same situation. They all went through the same challenges. Like all of us are going through this time of COVID-19. The carrot, the egg, and the coffee bean were put in the boiling water. But then the carrots came out soft. Came out soft. The egg be became hardened on the inside. But the, co the coffee bean changed the water. What will you be at the end of all of this? Are you going to be a carrot that will become soft after all of this? Are you going to be hardened and say, well, well, if God, if God, well, if God is a great God, why did he allow all of this? Or are you going to change environment and not allow the enemy to keep you down? I pray that you are encouraged tonight. I pray that you go into the rest of this year knowing that God is with you. That he did not bring you this far to leave you. He did not bring you this far to abandon you. Have confidence in him. He's not a man to lie. Now that the son of man that you should repent, you always stand by his word. May you be guided. May you be comforted. May his grace be sufficient for you. God bless you. God be with you. God makes his face to shine upon you. Father, we thank you tonight. I thank you for your women who are out there. Thank you for the soul that have been lifted tonight. Thank you for the earth that have been lifted tonight. We know that you have great and mighty things that you still want to do in our lives. And we know that we are rising above this situation. We are rising above this season. Because your word said we should arise and shine. For our light has come. And your glory has written upon us. We give you all the glory. We give you all the place because we are getting to the other side. We are our blessing is awaiting us. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Thank you for joining me tonight. Thank you so much. I want to believe that the times that we've had together, that, you know, we've been able to take something because that is really my heart to really encourage us and to challenge us. And we thank God. I want you to know that a change is coming. A change is coming. A change is coming. He said he will restore everything that the enemy has stolen. So be encouraged. Be strong. Rise. Rise to the occasion. Trust God with your life. Trust God with your family. Because the change is coming. You are going from barrenness to fruitfulness. You are going from lack to, sur to, to surplus. You are going from disappointment to fulfillment. And all those doors that have been closed will be open. Winning women. Keep winning until we come back again. God bless you. Thank you for joining me tonight. I want you to know, yes, the lockdown is being lifted. Your knockdown is not a knockout. Your knockdown is not a knockout. God bless you and stay beautiful. Keep winning.